Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to my book club. So the book we have today is Self-Discipline and Difficult Time by Martin Meadows. So we're going to discuss seven big ideas in this book today about self-discipline and difficult times. At a point of our life, we all lack discipline sometimes, right? So let's get it started and don't forget to like and subscribe and share the knowledge and join my book club today. So big idea number one, trying to move ahead during hard times is vital for survival. So when your world is turned on its axis, it's hard to even to remember your name, let alone put one foot in front of the other and try to salvage the situation. Unfortunately, many people feel that they have to take quick and robust action straight away. This is a huge mistake. Trying to move ahead is essential when times are hard, but it should be done at the right time. If you try to make changes in your life when you're, when you're grieving, suffering, and confused, how can you expect things to work out? Your mind is entirely elsewhere when situations seem to be a little too much to deal with. Remember that self-discipline will get you through. The ways to do that are probably not what you've been attempting so far. So here's an insight guys, when you're going through a difficult time, it's important to do something, but that needs to be well thought out and at the right time. So self-discipline in difficult times teaches you that moving in some ways is essential, but it has to be the right way. You can only identify which path is correct by giving yourself a little time, accepting the situation and coming to terms with it. Then you must allow yourself to feel the emotions connected with whatever you're facing. Of course, some hardships are more challenging to deal with than others. Losing a loved one is the worst pain you can experience. You have to give yourself the time to grieve and process what has gone on. However, other problems can still turn your world upside down, such as being declared bankrupt or having your heart broken. These are still hardships, but ones that you can overcome a little easier. So did you know, according to an article in the Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, adults in the U.S. increased alcoholic consumption during the COVID-19 pandemic. This points to a way in which the world copes with troubles. Big idea number two, difficult times can change you and that's okay. During an overseas trip, Martin Meadows received a phone call informing him that a close family member had passed away. Quite understandably, he was heartbroken and began to have panic attacks and obsessive thoughts. It's through these experiences that he realized the importance of taking things slowly and not being too hard on yourself. People tell you that you should be positive and look to the future, but those words are meaningless. How can you look to the future when you don't see one at a time? There is nothing that can make you feel better when you're struggling with the effects of a completely life-changing event. In the aftermath of a life changing event, focus on surviving until you feel strong enough to start planning your next move. Immediately after troubling times, focus on eating healthily, getting enough sleep, moving around a little more, and not allowing anyone to make you feel guilty about doing nothing more. You shouldn't rush your healing from a difficult situation. You need to allow the process to take as long as necessary. That's the only way you can come out of the situation feeling somewhat like yourself, albeit slightly changed. Of course, some problems in this world aren't quite as life-changing, but can still cause you a large amount of temporary emotional distress. For instance, breaking up with your long-term partner, being diagnosed with a disease that you will need to manage for the rest of your life or your business failing these are all things that turn your world completely upside down from a time until you learn to manage them they might not change you fundamentally but they will teach you things difficult times either change us or teach us something be open to both to grow big idea number three taking a moment to breathe can help you to avoid a wrong move acting in the heat of the moment is never a good idea. There has never been a good outcome for anyone who has reacted with their emotions or on high alert. For instance, if you've just argued with your manager, storming out of the office and shouting about it is not a great move. And instead, you should take a moment to calm down, breathe, and allow some time to pass. Of course, this takes self-discipline because your emotions are trying to push you into action. 
Clearing your head will allow you to avoid destructive outcomes, which could easily be avoided with a bit of thought. Allow your emotion to settle before you say or do anything. Reacting in the moment could lead to catastrophic consequences. It only takes a short time to gain control over your emotions and avoid negative actions. It doesn't have to be an argument or anger that pushes you into something. For instance, a relationship problem might force you into the arms of someone else for a night. That leaves you feeling guilty at the fact you've just cheated on your partner, causing another problem. An issue with your business might make you feel anxious and stressed. And you snap at your partner when you get home that causes them to be upset. So you can stop a situation from becoming worse by taking a moment of breathe. Martin Meadows suggests waiting to take an, any action, going to bed and then in the morning questioning whether you still want to take the reactive action. The chances are that you won't. The idea that you're not ignoring what's happening, but you're learning that to some extent you can control your emotions and therefore control negative actions. Beginning at number four, find positive coping mechanisms to help avoid negative actions. Everyone has a different way of coping with hardships and challenging situations. It's essential to be open to the idea that perhaps your strategy isn't right all the time. Some people isolate themselves from those around them until they feel better. Others throw themselves into partying, drinking and overeating to try and mask the pain. Some people seek out total solitude and try and think the problem through. So the first step to identifying the best way to cope is to learn what your existing coping mechanisms typically are and then look at whether they have worked well for you in the past. Could you try something different? For instance, if you usually isolate yourself when things go wrong, how about seeking the help of someone close to you instead? Perhaps that could lead to a more positive outcome. So here's an insight guys, your past coping mechanisms haven't worked for you, be open to change and brave enough to try new things. Even though coping with difficult situations is a personal deal, there are a few common ways to help. You should certainly make sure that you get enough rest. Stress and emotional reactions can leave you feeling exhausted. You're going to be unable to make positive decisions when you're worn out. You should also try and get some exercise. When you exercise, your brain releases feel-good endorphins. Your body releases these endorphins regardless of your state of mind. So you can use that fact to try and make yourself feel better. Of course, you're also improving your health in general too. Martin made a suggest trying something called restorative productivity. It's not a good idea to make huge decisions at this time, but you can encourage healing and strength by tricking yourself into feeling more productive. Write a to-do list and start taking items off. Perhaps clean the house, delete some old photos from your phone, do small things which make you feel more in control. You shouldn't try and fix the problem when you're feeling knocked for sex. But a little distance and confidence can help you reach the point where you can attempt it. Ironically, this may also help you to see things differently. So Martin Melo says, it's rare that we can make good decisions in a vulnerable state. Big idea number five, take baby steps when you're ready to move forward. Once you've allowed yourself the time to process what has happened and recover, you'll want to start taking steps to fix the problem. When this time comes, move forward with caution and take small measured steps. So sit down and think about the problem, try to put it into perspective and come up with a reframed way of looking at it. Pulling yourself back up takes time. Make sure you go day by day and take baby steps to recover. Don't try and fix the problem in one big rush. For instance, you might struggle to find something positive at first when you lose your job, but after a bit of time, you might start to feel that this could be a new start. You can look for a job that you enjoy helping you to feel empowered during your working day. Everything will have some hidden blessing if you look hard enough. Once you identify that positive, use it as a stepping stone to rebuilding. Learn to reframe negative thoughts into positives. Over time, you will become more positive generally and you will find it easier to look for the light amongst the darkness. Avoid focusing on the thing that you cannot control or influence. If you do that, you're going to feel completely helpless and you're right back to square one. 
Take things slowly, day by day. Remember that coming to terms with something which has turned your world upside down takes time. With every baby step you take, you'll rebuild your confidence and strength. Make sure that you move slowly and don't try to push yourself too far too soon. Big idea number six, learn how to prepare yourself for future hardships. Thinking about potential future events doesn't mean that you have a negative mindset. It means you're preparing yourself to deal with any challenges that come your way healthily and productively. Life is full of ups and downs, but you can arm yourself with tips to help you prepare for any future hardships. The most important is to learn from your mistakes, learn from what hasn't worked well for you. Put all of this knowledge to good use next time something challenges you or causes you difficulty. So here's an insight guys, you cannot protect yourself against the negative emotions, but you can learn healthy coping mechanisms. Martin Meadows suggests stretching yourself out of your comfort zone. Not, not only will this help you to deal with things in a better way next time, but it will also build your confidence and help you grow. Expose yourself to things that worry you or scare you, face your fears and knock them down. By doing this, you are developing your resilience and confidence. Both are key when dealing with future hardships and challenges. Also allow yourself to feel negative emotions and understand them. Allow yourself to suffer a little and don't try and constantly push negativity away. By doing that, you'll learn how to cope with the emotions that you may otherwise struggle with. This lessens the emotional impact of a problem in the future. Push yourself out of your comfort zone and do things that you would typically shy away from. You'll build your confidence and surprise yourself. Big idea number seven and the last one, develop empathy and kindness by lending a helping hand to others. When a friend or someone close to you struggles with hardship, it's easy to try and stay away. You assume they need space and that they will call you if they need you. Not everyone feels able to call on others when they are struggling, and as a result, they're trying to cope alone. So Martin Meadows says, a person trying to make sense of a difficult situation may be incapable of gathering the courage to reach out to you. Check in on them regularly. Let them know that you're rooting for them and that you are there for them. Remember that the way they feel and how you feel are two different things. Don't judge based on what you would think or feel. And instead, try and focus on them and what they are telling you about their thoughts and feelings. Avoid trying to see someone else's problem through your own eyes. Focus on them instead. We all see and feel things differently. Also, avoid saying it'll be okay or other empty words. Sure, we tend to fall back on these because we're not sure what else to say. But a person going through something difficult isn't going to find comfort in you telling them things like this. Can you think back to the last time someone said them to you? Did you find it comforting? Probably not. And instead, acknowledge what they're going through and agree that it does indeed suck. Don't try and comfort them with empty words or lies. Be honest and open and comfort to them with the truth. Simply being there and being supportive is often enough. Okay, guys, so that was it for today's summary. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a really great book, actually, guys. And at the end, guys, I'm going to leave you with this so you can try. Think about how you generally handle difficult situations. Do you run away and hide? Do you throw yourself into partying? Do you seek help from others? Assess whether it works well for you and think about other recovery methods to try next time. Identify your recovery buddy. Identify one person who you can go to when you're struggling. A check-in with your friends regularly. They might be struggling and don't have the courage to reach out to you. Okay, guys, so hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join with me guys on the big journey of knowledge and join my book club and also my audiobook club. So I hope you guys are doing great. So I'll see you next time.